Stefan approached me about two years ago uh, if I'd be interested in doing some design work for them. So I started working on their toolbox division. Then they approached me uh, last year and asked me if I'd be interested in building them an interactive car for Snap-on. And this is something they've never done. So I gave them the original designs and input on, on what it was, and this is where we came. They wanted, since it was, it was the 50th anniversary of the Chevy, of the 57 Chevy. So originally they wanted a Chevy convertible. And then I said, you know, that doesn't lend itself to anything. Why don't we make it out of a Chevy uh, tool wagon or a Chevy Nomad? So Snap-on said, fine, give us some ideas and some designs. And I just sketched up a couple things and they put it through the, you know, the process. And they called me up and they said, we love what you came up with, start building it. So then Snap-on sent, since I was a Snap-on fanatic, and that's how I got the gig in the first place, Snap-on sent me lots of new equipment to start doing the car build at our studio, which was then made into a, uh, a web TV production. So they set up Ain't Street Legal where you can go online and look at how we started building the car. Right online, you could like live video webcam, you could watch the episodes, you could watch the nexus of how I started. Because we didn't start with a car, we started with just parts. This, we didn't take a 57 Nomad and take it apart. I went and got a shell. And all that shell was was the roof, the front end, and the sides. And the sides were so destroyed that whoever had it, the guy had welded it up and beaded it. We ripped it all out. We started with new sheet metal on the sides and then built a frame and went around it from there. So instead of going with an old big block type of old school, I decided to go with something really high tech and new school. So GM Performance stepped up to the plate and made us this beautiful LS7. This is the most state of the art motor out there. This puts out normally about 550 horse. So instead of 550 horse, we said, let's take it up a notch. So we put on a Pro Charger. And so now we're about 900 horse. So we started, then we started making our frame so it would have a C5 chassis. So it's all independent suspension with a torque tube that runs all the way through with the rear transmission. By Phoenix Transmission made us a custom transmission and then uh, Dynatech made us a custom rear end. So with the custom rear end, take all the torque and power because it's a race car and it wasn't, it was called Ain't Street Legal. There's no mirrors, there's no heater, there's no exhaust, there ain't no turn signals. This is, this is an Ain't Street Legal race car. And we got Wink Eller to come on into the project with us. And I got my friend Poncho Clark, wherever Poncho's hiding. There he is, Poncho. That's the Poncho, another famous metal sculptor known all over the world for his knives and stuff and a bender of metal. Between Wink's designs and my insane ideas, we started banging out and going to the factory and looking what we could actually make the car out of real parts. The A-arms are all completely made out of real snap-on wrenches. All the trim is all made out of snap-on wrenches. Uh, all the brackets, everything designed, all the internals are all made out of snap-on wrenches, sockets, torque bars. Uh, we put a diagnostic in. Uh, we have a Solus and a Modus. So on the fly, all hooked into the engine, on the fly we can flip, go in there and change the horsepower from uh, 750 to 900 to 1,000 horse right with the program. So when I started doing the sketches up, since I was famous for my neon lighting, we decided we had to light it up. So we had contests, what the name would be, and someone came up with the name Glomad because that came pretty good. So the car is completely lit with, uh, with lights everywhere, so it gives it that, that effect. But all the decremental, everything that went into it from the factory and working with a company where we now had tools that we you know, normally wouldn't have used to build the car. Moon wrenches, S wrenches, straight wrenches, there are roughly 360 wrenches in the construction. Not decremental, actual parts of the car. They actually serve a purpose. Every one of them does something. The uh, big three inch torque wrenches down the center frame uh, hold the car so it doesn't have any, so it doesn't have any flex. The A-arms, the, the control arms, everything was made out of wrenches and sockets. All hardened and they're for real. It's not just a, 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 an ornamental. Then we put a, a toolbox in the back that has a widescreen TV, DVD, 
And so you could actually watch. So when the car was at a show, they could put in whatever they wanted you, the you know, you the customer, to see what they wanted to see. So it was a totally interactive product. Uh, we went with all high performance parts and we wanted to keep it within the 50s look, but all high tech.